Hello everybody and welcome to the South Australian Museum and Young Explorers. My name is Emma and today I'm going to take you on a very special adventure. But before we can go anywhere, I have someone inside my pouch for you to meet. Her name is Pinko and she lives at the museum and knows lots of museum stories. Some of you might have met her before. She's a bit sleepy today and we need to wake her up. Wake up, Pinko. Come on out. Oh, I can see a bit of wiggling. Let me have a feel. Oh, hang on a minute. It's a notebook and a pen. I wonder why Pinko might have those. Come on out, Pinko. Oh, I can feel her nose and her whiskers. Here she is. Pinko is a bilby. Bilbies usually live in the bush, but Pinko lives in the museum. Now, Pinko was wondering, do you know what science is? What do scientists do? Science is all about exploring the world around us, about finding things out about maybe the past or places that we've never visited before. There can be lots of different types of scientists. There can be ones that explore the ocean, space, rocks and minerals. And the amazing thing about science is making mysterious things a little bit easier to understand. Now, when we're being scientists, there's some very important things that we need to do. Firstly, we need to observe. So that means having a good look around, finding things that we think are interesting and really, really looking up close. And then we need to notice things and maybe even use things like a notebook and a pen to write down what we see or draw pictures and find out more about them. But why do we have museums? Besides them being really, really fun to visit, museums are amazing places because they give us the opportunity to see things from the past or things from parts of the world that we might not be able to visit. They can tell us so much about the world around us. Here's a question. How do scientists and museum staff work out what to put in a museum? how the collections are put together. Well, when we collect things, it's got a special name, it's called taxonomy, and that's when we sort things into groups. But we can sort things into groups in lots of different ways. Pinko and I thought we might show you some different ways to sort objects today. My first object is a very small sea star, like this. You see, it's got one, two, three, four, five legs. I wonder where a sea star comes from. I think you can probably guess it. It actually comes from the sea. It's got a lovely star shape. I bet you know a song about stars. Should we sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Even though this one comes from the ocean. Are you ready? Can you get your twinkly fingers? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Let me get something else out. Oh, hello. It's a nippy crab. It's got these big claws opening and shutting its mouth. It looks like it might be hungry. I wonder where a crab comes from. Maybe from the sea or at the beach. If I put it next to my sea star, what do you think the collection is? <gasps> wow, a shiny shell. Now, we definitely found this one on the beach. Are you starting to see what's going on here? All of the things in my collection are from the ocean or found at the beach. Oh, this one's interesting. Almost looks a bit like a rock, but it's so, so light. Hmm. It's quite hard, but do you know what? It once lived in the ocean. It's a sea sponge. And when it was in the ocean, it was soft and squishy. Maybe you've got a sponge at home that you could have a feel of. But eventually the ocean washed it up on the beach and it dried in the sun and now it's a little bit harder. But look, I can also put that in my collection. Wonder what this is. It's a sea urchin once had a living creature inside and once it washed up on the beach, it dried up and it's nice and hard. I have one last object to see if it fits in this collection. Let me get it for you. I wonder if you know what it is. It's very sharp and pointy 
And if we look up really close, we can see that it's got lots of jagged edges. I'm gonna give you a hint. If I was swimming in the sea and one of these swam up to me, I think I would be very, very frightened. It's a shark tooth. Here's my friend, the shark. Ooh, actually, it's not really my friend. I'm quite frightened of it. This tooth probably doesn't fit inside this shark's mouth. The shark that had this tooth would have been much, much bigger. Do you think this tooth fits in this collection? We have all of these things that can be found on a beach and even a tooth can wash up on a beach. So this is a whole collection about a beach. On our level two in biodiversity gallery, you can find beach collections. But I'm thinking about my shark tooth. It doesn't just need to be in this collection. I think I can use it to make a whole different collection. Whoa, it's very big. I wonder what it is. Hmm. Oh my goodness, this one is tiny. The tiniest thing. <gasps> Whoa, much bigger than my last. Totally different color to these ones. We have one, two, three, four objects. And I wonder how they all go together. We know this one's a shark tooth, but what's this? Maybe a claw, like a dinosaur claw. Rawr. Or maybe a horn. What do you think? Look good. This is actually a tooth. This is a tooth, but I wonder what it's from. It's very big, so I'm thinking a very big animal. It's actually a sperm whale tooth. And next time you come into the museum, you might like to have a look by the cafe and see the skeleton of the sperm whale, and you can see even bigger teeth like this. What about this one here? It's definitely a different colour. It's pointy like our shark's tooth. It's actually a tooth from a prehistoric gigantic shark called a megalodon. Imagine how big that megalodon's mouth is. Can you make some big munchy megalodon teeth? Megalodons are not around anymore, and I'm really glad because I think I would be terribly frightened if I was swimming in the ocean and I came across a shark with teeth that big. The reason it's this colour, though, is because it's very old, and slowly over time, it's turned into a fossil. What about this tiny object? It's so small, I wonder if you've seen something like this before. Maybe you can have a look in the mirror and open up your mouth. This is a baby tooth. And this baby tooth has been lent to me by someone very special. Do you think it goes with these ones here? All of these creatures once lived in the ocean. And I'm pretty sure human babies don't live in the ocean. But it is a tooth, and you might have worked it out, this collection is all about teeth. But do you remember our shark tooth was also in a very different collection, just about beaches. So when museums are collecting, they don't have to just say, get all of the butterflies together or all of the animals together. They can mix them up in different ways. And you can also do that at home. You know what, you can make collections in any way you like. You might collect things because they are all the same colour. Or you might even collect them just because they're things you love. It's been so nice visiting you today. Pinko and I are going to go now and we're thinking that we might go and make ourselves a rock collection. Maybe you can make a collection at home. Thanks for visiting us. Bye. Thank you.